Hi, I'm Leilani Smith and welcome to our avocado ranch and my new backyard. But this is actually what, the third episode now? So new wish to you guys. Um, and I just wanted to say when we lived in Monrovia, uh, we had this alleyway that I would park at and we had neighbors across the way. And these neighbors were super sweet and kind. They had a, a kid and uh, my man would see their garage door open and he would either go close it or let them know because they left it open a lot. And uh, they ended up giving us like a tequila one time. And then of course I turned around and I gave them some coleslaw kimchi of my mom's recipe. And then it became this thing where, you know, we would just kind of give things back and forth and just help each other out, which was really nice. Um, and before we ended up leaving, they ended up swinging by and ta-da, dropping us off another bottle of whiskey. <laughs> So tonight we are getting into the Johnny Walker Game of Thrones limited edition uh, Song of Ice uh, blended scotch whiskey. Now there is no proof on it. It does state the ABV which is 40.2% which is if you double it, double it, you get 80.4, yo. That's how we do it here. Now, uh, the Scottish Gaelic word for whiskey, <laughs> Ushka Bear. Don't know if I'm saying that right. I think I'm pretty close. Ushka Bear. I had to look it up, do a couple things and research, but that's a fun word. And it's a lot for whiskey without the E on scotch, of course. Now, it is known and stated that uh, Johnny was a proprietor of a grocer at Kilmarnock and uh, he just blended whiskey until it came up with the consistency that he wanted and for that whiskey to be consistent before he even put his name on it. But like back then they were just doing whatever, whatever came out the barrels, whenever, didn't matter if it was the same name, same company, if it changed, it didn't matter. They were just selling whiskey. Uh, it is stated that he wanted consistency and lucky for him, a guy named Jim Beveridge is now the master distiller over there. And any guy with the name Beveridge is going to make sure your beverage is consistent. Now, as I looked on the site, the only weird thing that I felt as much history as I thought that a whiskey would have been established in 1820, there was little to none. I could barely find anything. However, they did have a little kind of thing of where they spoke about how they make scotch whiskey. So we are getting into that tonight. Now, first you need cereal. And I ain't talking about no Captain Crunch or no, you know, Lucky Charms. <laughs> None of that grain cereal. They call it cereal there. And from there, they mix that with water and they heat that. And uh, with that cereal being heated, that heat is basically telling that cereal to grow, bitch. And that's what that cereal does. It grows, bitch. And from there, that is what they call malting. So whenever you hear rye malt, barley malt, malt malt, that's what they're talking about. Except in Aladdin when Gilbert Godfrey, if I can remember correctly, where he played the parrot and he was like, I'm malting, I'm malting. That's the only time, not the right malt. All right. <laughs> so now that you know the difference from there, in order for them to dry it, they throw that cereal into a kiln to stop the growth. Uh, then with some peat smoke, they end up drying it just a bit more in some of the whiskeys. That's why you get that peaty taste in some of that uh, scotches um, that you try from a certain particular reason, region, more so from one space to another space. That will add that kind of uh, flavor and that drying. And from there, they end up grinding that cereal down back and then they mix it again with water, heat that water once again, 
uh, to create like this soluble sugar that they can extract. They allow that to cool, then they add some yeast, and that's when it gets into the fermentation, which then creates this kind of beer for them. They end up distilling this beer at least two times through the still. And with that process, it extracts uh, most of the excess water and it gives it a higher concentration of the alcohol and the flavor. Um, and from that, that right there, they take that and throw it into like specifically uh, uh, textured done casks that they had done and they have to let it sit for at least three years for it to be legally called scotch whiskey. Let's get into this Game of Thrones. Now, I don't think any of these Game of Thrones are different kind of flavors or a different kind of batch or a different expression. Um, I think it's all the same. It's just a, their unique blend that they state of scotch whiskey for the whole Game of Thrones theme. Um, Johnny Walker did it with the, the screw top for us today. <laughs> so let's do this. And it's a nice kind of yellowish. It looks like a banana. <laughs> it looks like pee. A banana. <laughs> banana pee. <laughs> Didn't we have this conversation already? <laughs> so let's try this. Oh, I didn't even smell it. I was just about ready to like... <laughs> totally just down this whiskey. I'm just ready to do this, all right? And the funny thing is, I do smell a hint of banana. Thanks, boo. You're welcome. <laughs> so it smells like almost rain. I, I, I smell like rain bananas. A light hint of like a smoke and it's a fruit and again I want to go with like a cantaloupe it's a cantaloupe so let's get this cantaloupe pee pee into my body <laughs> it wasn't too bad y'all I mean I'm not the biggest fan of obviously mass-produced whiskeys um, and maybe I need to just drink more scotch, you know, in, in order to get my flavor profile into what I like about scotches. But usually I'm used to like this heavy mossy peat, which took me quite some time to gather my senses and wrap my taste buds around, but it has come to that. So I will be uh, circling back around to a lot of the whiskeys that when I tried first that I was just disgusted with. I think I just would take my Lafroy uh, to like my theater shows and like after the end of each show, I would just share it with the group and everyone's like, oh my God, this is such great whiskey. And I was like, oh, I'm just glad to get rid of it. <laughs> but now it might not be the case. Hold on yourself like real hard. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, this is the whiskey of life, which is truth. <laughs> so much truth. <laughs> but I did. I shared the good stuff. I didn't really share bad stuff. It was always the good stuff. Good stuff to other people too, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to me. You're digging your hole. I am. <laughs> Let's try this. There is that pop that's forward, which is not my favorite, which always tells me it needs to settle or it's just going to be an okay whiskey. It's very light tasting, easy going, uh, has a nice watery feel. You get some of the fruity notes uh, traveling with a little bit of like a taste of honey and maybe a bit of like a floral note, like sunflower and some zest. That zest is there. And maybe that's always what that pop and zest happens and it always triggers me. But it's easy. It's an easy drinking scotch. I can see why um, Johnny uh, Walker, their, their whole of uh, uh, their whole being seems to state that they are 
that they make the most scotch of all the whiskeys in the world and that they also end up having they also have like large reserves they state that are like famous and rare uh whiskeys um let's hope that they start putting it into good use because <laughs> i'm sure they can blend some of these <laughs> because this tastes all right this is you know i could see why people are like oh this is a nice you know easy drinking scotch and this is how they might get into some of the scotches in the play i find it kind of just there there's nothing special that's creeping up there's nothing that tells me hey i'm the scotch for you you need to come here and give it to me i'm not feeling that it's just like ah okay this is all right I guess I can go to the theater and share this. <laughs> Let me not do that, but I will. If you guys see me with a bottle, just know I either love it or I'm, mm, I don't know. Yeah, it's just an okay drink to me. There's nothing really grabbing me by my, my chest and letting me know that this is the whiskey. Um, but it is nice. It is easy. And for that, Leilani Drinks the Brown Stuff has to give Johnny Walker Game of Thrones a Song of Ice limited edition blended scotch whiskey. Two and a half kisses. Because it's easy drinking. And easy drinking seems to be into in in a lot of people's wheelhouse. Just not mine. But I don't mind it. So if you want something simple as a gateway into a scotch, Johnny Walker might be your thing. Cheers.